really um, thinking in 3D. Um, they tend to look at things as very two-dimensional. So when you're doing a face, they've got that circle with two eyes poked out. Um, you really have to start looking at things in profile to understand um, sculpture. Sculpture is extension in space. And it takes time to figure out how things actually look in three dimensions. Uh, the difference between dishing and raising, when you're dishing, you're working from the inside and you're stretching the metal out and you can only go so far before it thins out and it's, it's going to split on you. By raising, if you do it properly, that's how they do deep vessels or helmets or things like that, where you actually bring it in and the sides um, or circumference becomes thicker as you come down and around it. But it's a very tricky, slow process. Um, so what I'll just do 18. 18. Yeah. Which I found seems to be the magic gauge for, for doing this type of stuff. Thinner than that, it wrinkles and splits. Um, thicker than that, it's just too hard to move and get the detail on it. And then everything tastes like pennies. When I used to smoke and work with copper, hot copper, then your cigarettes start tasting like copper. It's a good way to quit smoking. It's horrible. So you're getting the metal coming up there and just kind of nudging it down a little bit at a time. And that way you're able to bring it in and get some real depth on it. Because you basically you've got, um, think of it as a graph, you've just got a zero baseline. And what you're doing is deforming plus or minus in that zero baseline. So it's, um, it's all, it's distortion. You're taking a flat line and distorting it. And it's complicated as hell. You can't, if you get a crack in there, you can weld it up, but it's always going to be a brittle spot. And it's just going to usually, once a crack starts, it's going to form and stretch out longer and longer. Okay, I think I've got enough um, depth there to do um, most of the features on there, bring back to about here, which is what we're looking just in front of the ears kind of thing. So that should be sufficient for the shape there. We've got a very weak chin on this person right now, so I want to bring that forward. So I need a smaller ball to be on that, punch it, and then we're off and running. Because you're just back and forth, and you can use tongs to grip it. You'll find now as I move into the rest of it, it's all that cold. And it's because I'm intimately grabbing and getting in there, it's not really practical to do it hot. No, it's always uh, important to do sketching and to study anatomy. You gotta learn the shape and actually studying it, it's not the preconceived ideas we have in our head about the shape of a human body or a tree or whatever. Usually surprising revelations when you actually study the actual object. So it pays to do that. Having said that, I haven't even looked at my clay piece yet. I've done enough faces that I kind of know the basic geometry or structure that I'm working with. Uh, once we get a little farther into this, I'll decide you know what the gender is, what the, you know the look of the face. I'm, I'm just going to kind of let it play out and see what it suggests. And Something like that. I can do an entire face with those three right there. I've got others, and uh, they certainly do come in handy, but um, it's amazing how few shapes you actually need. Uh, and you don't know what the shapes are until you actually get halfway into a project. It's like, you know, what I really need, and then it, it pops into your head. That's where this one came in. So, once again, we're, we're skirting that entire issue. Now is the time to start focusing a little bit more on symmetry. I wasn't too concerned. There was distortions from side to side as far as um, difference on the width of the face and how the jaw came down and stuff like that. So now I've got to kind of correct some of those things before I really start sharpening up the features. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a pretty distorted face in the end. Um, you want to have symmetry as much as possible unless you're going for ugly. 
which is a lot easier. I'm just smoothing out a lot of the wrinkles here. Just softening up all the features just so we have something in the general on the planes is what I'm looking for is the different heights there. So pretty much there and then I'm going to do the kneeling. That is a style of valley stake. Basically it's the shape that I to get in here to get tight contours of a double a compound curve. So it's being supported on two sides and you're able to work it into there. Everything that you do when you work on an area distorts the area adjacent to it. So as you're doing it, um, you refine one area, it distorts the other. You got to go back and find that which distorts the other until you, you just smaller, smaller circles till it, you get the shape that you want. Um, but it's kind of a bitch when you get an area that you really like and then when you go to work on the other part, it ends up distorting it and you have to go back and fix it. But them's the brakes. Like I have to really narrow my focus, and I find this is when I disappear into the work. So, my, see you guys. I'll be back in an hour or two. It's hard when I'm doing demonstrations to try to stay uh, relate what I'm doing because it's so easy just to get absorbed into this. Typically, when I'm doing this alone, this is when I crank up the tunes, and I find um, really heavy violent music is, is my uh, happy place when I'm doing this sort of thing. It helps me focus. So I listen to stuff like System of the Down where it's just the violent screaming and it's just loud and that brings everything down to a very fine point of focus for me and I find that's the way I can uh, tap into my inner creative angst. But we could yell at you real loud. <laughs> <laughs> we can try it. Uh, see how it goes. It's medication, you know. <laughs> and know what's wrong with it. You can look at a skull and, and most people don't know so like a, a very um, cartoonish looking skull still looks very skull like to most people but if you don't have the face right we um, unconsciously can see that very easily. So to make a face that is attractive and, and realistic and, and plausible that's tricky. But that's why they pay me the big bucks, right? Oh, wait, we're paying him? <laughs> <laughs> when I'm doing female type faces, I, the high forehead is a very um, standard shape to, that differentiates the male from the female. So rather than have that sloping brow, you want to have something with a high forehead, and that gives it a very feminine shape. Dude, that was much less erotic than you guys thought it was going to be. <laughs> I want to hear about the male in it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think we covered that earlier. <laughs> so. Now what I'm going to do is come in at an angle to push that eyelid down. I'm actually going to make an undercut there. And once I've got that shape, that has structural dynamics that it won't come out anymore. And then I can push out the eyeball. Um, but it's kind of a final step because you can't really change the shape once you put that in there. <laughs> 